the stop sign, turn left onto Hale Avenue.
rest of the season for sure. It, it doesn't seem like he's gonna they're gonna give up on him as a starter because he's made the captain. And as Dan Campbell pointed out, that this guy is making all the calls on the right now. So you got one year, so you got one year of him to get everybody else on the speed. Well, some of the extra coach on the field.
Texas train. At the crossing, we have Rick, a 175-pound frustrated man who's running late for work. And on the tracks, we have Bull, a million-pound freight train that takes a mile to stop. Let's see who comes out on top. You can't beat a train, so don't try. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. What's your ultimate game day experience? A tricked out man cave? Deluxe tailgate? Then enter the five hour energy football sweepstakes for a chance to win $10,000. And make your ultimate game day experience a reality. To enter, buy any five hour energy product and upload the receipt. It's that easy. The five hour energy football sweepstakes. Enter today. No purchase necessary. Must be listening to the US and say seven times 20 for one for official rules. How do I do without purchase? Visit 5 Stay in the middle three lanes. into your 
championship competition that have no shot of winning. None. None. They cannot win the NCAA basketball. Every year there's, I don't know, two dozen teams that have virtually no shot to win it, but they're allowed in. And on any given day, they can provide the tournament's most entertaining moment. But a team that has spent five months earning it can be out because of a bad 40 minutes. And while you can certainly say, well, you gotta win on the floor, that's true. But think about kind of how ludicrous that is to allow teams that have no shot of winning it, give them a chance to impact the outcome of a major sports championship. I've always felt that way. Now, hey, I'm not gonna argue with the entertainment fact. Cinderella's a, a, a great part of it. But most Cinderella's, the clock hits midnight. Next game. Most of them. Right. Not all of them. But there have been, there've been some cases where teams run it over. Right? Yeah, the, the, the Butler run. Yeah, James Madison. And you had a couple of famous... Series. Yeah, you've had a couple of famous underdogs and sleepers and Cinderella's that won it. Villanova and NC State in the 80s. And they are by far the exception. And they were also still... If you went and ranked teams, those were going to be top 40 teams in the Ironically, they both won their conference tournaments. Yeah. But if you're, you know, why are we doing, why would this be considered in the NHSA? It sounds like because the participants themselves won. Well, they're going to say that now until, you know, the first time that somebody gets hurt. Playing a game, you get a really good team that goes against, you know, let's say, my team when I played high school. I mean, if this were the case, my over 9 team would have a chance to play in the, in the, in the playoffs. It's ridiculous. So then some kid who plays for a really good school, you know, gets hurt in a game against my team, which he never should have been playing in the first place, and now that team is totally damaged. I mean, I understand injury is a part of the game, but if you can limit it because you're limiting the number of games you're playing, do it. I don't think you need over 9 teams, 3 and 6 teams, Four and five teams playing in the playoffs. It just it doesn't make any sense to me. It's almost like I mean, it's like it's stay in the left three track. lanes. You don't need it. I mean, you're, you're high school. This is, you're not 12 years old anymore. You're, you're a high school varsity football team. Why are we going to say, yeah, your crappy team gets in the playoffs? Your crappy team gets in the playoffs. Your crappy team gets in the playoffs. It doesn't make any sense to me. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Let's go to Chris and Rocket the share ninety seven one. Hi, Chris. Chris, Chris, that's not even the point. I just, we just want to know you're against it. 
I would be again. Today. Okay, thank you. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Dave in Sterling Heights. Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up, folks? So, you know, thirty years ago, Gonzaga was one of those teams that didn't have a chance to do anything. They were throughout the team for a while, made a run. You know, then come up to last year, they're one of the best teams in basketball, really, because someone gave them a chance. You know, in the past. The money and notoriety they got from Anna Cinderella definitely helped them. So if they weren't invited back then, where would they be today? It makes a big difference. So yeah, I think it's important that that schools that you may not have a chance or has a chance to be a Cinderella, I think it's important they get in. So in high school, do you let everybody in? No. Okay. Let's go to Mike and Shelby. Hi, Mike. There's also a difference between football and, and basketball. Hey. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Mike and Shelby. I just want to make the point. I don't. I don't think that every team should make the playoffs. No, I think that's ludicrous. But there needs to be um, an evening out of scheduling. Like it doesn't make sense that a team like Macomb, Dakota, or Chippewa Valley plays a fourth year on Northern or a Lake Shore. Uh, it's just an easy win. It's like Alabama playing Mercer, and then that win automatically qualifies towards the playoffs. I think there needs to be more crossover games between like the OAA and the MAC. Within those within those conferences, there's obviously divisions, and those divisions need to cross over and play those out of conference games. So where are these two more more fair? If that makes sense. You're saying you're saying at the, uh, the beginning. I don't even remember the teams you said, but you said those teams have too many easy.
to do it? Or is it based on water temperature and scenery? Here it is. Um, this study compared 100 new beach spots across the world and ranked them based on beach quality, safety, weather, and lodging. Uh, no, All that's, right. what, that's what they're ranked on. Top spots in the world. Text us where you think it is. 248 We'll get to some of your answers. Gator, do you have a guess? I, 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 your I, well, I, I, <laughs> I have one that, that I have as a safety if I can't come up with something else. Kang, do you got any ideas? I think there's some guesses out there. Yeah, yeah, right. You're saying it's more widely than Gators or something? I don't know that it's your thing either. Just want to do this on Pathfinder. It's got 
Tommy Noonan. That's your man. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that, uh, so was the, that was my safety go-to because it's, that's why I asked the question. What's the criteria? Um, unnamed texter. Topsky need a big spot. Mojo's flooded backyard. Uh, from Joe and Novi. Porcupine Mountain State Park. Tim and Lapeer. I'm guessing... Uh, I've had this before. Kitchini Kippy Spring in the UP. Remember we were talking about this when that plane went missing up there in the UP? We talked about that we had that term before. Kitchatippy Kippy. Uh, AJ says Crystal Lake. Uh, Name Texture says Wojo's Hot Tub. Mike says, I hope it's not Gators Pond. Dave in the Shore says Pictured Rocks in the UP. Chad says Porky's in the UP. I've been there. It's phenomenal. Uh, from an unnamed texture, Polar Plunge, Polar Bear Plunge, Lake Michigan, uh, Belle Isle. There's a very secluded spot that is popular. It's from an unnamed texture. Not Lake Superior, Shrinkage. That's from Tebow. You have any guesses? Well, the thought of this was, uh, you know, um, my thought process was thinking about the uh, the Lake Michigan side. The water is typically kind of cold, uh, although it does warm up in the, in the middle of the summer. The, the, the height of it, it it's, it's certainly swimmable, but I don't know if I was thinking it would be skin and So I'm thinking of more of the uh, inland. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal Lake is fantastic. Uh, the other one, uh, the Torch Lake, is fantastic. Lanes. But what about the Rifle River? Isn't that one of these things where people... That's a great one. I think I'd be interested um, for those that partake in the skinny dipping. <laughs> if that's the case. A long time since I've gone skinny dipping. Uh, Pine Lake was my last well, encounter. It's my dating advisor's top 100 skinny dipping spots in the world. And again, the criteria, as I mentioned earlier, uh, beach quality, safety, weather, and lodging. I will say a spokesperson for the publication did acknowledge to M Live, read the story, that not all locations on its list are legal. And anyone doing this activity are doing so at their own risk. According to Michigan law, anyone caught for a decent exposure could be charged with a misdemeanor punishable up to one year in jail and or fine of $1,000, right. also an unlawful act on land owned by the Michigan DMV. But, yet, uh, number 10 is Frenchman's Hole in Maine. Come on, man. I just decided to read the top 10 because At number 10 is Frenchman's right Hole. Can I get one more? Sure. It's Falls. Yeah, I just wanted to throw my two cents in on the whole high school sports schedule. 
them. You know, a couple of years ago, it's hard to take a place southfield twice just around out a nine-game season because nobody would play Clarkson because at the time, you know, Clarkson was still a great program. Nobody's ever been afraid to play him. I mean, that's why one of the reasons that they ended up switching up the, the, the high school sign, playoff. Turn left onto scenarios West 14 where mile teams aren't punished. Then turn right onto East they, Road. Uh, if they lose to somebody that's really good and don't hit their six wins. Yeah, they've, they've so. changed that scheduling component, I see. But my question for you is, Joe, Joe, do you have any tie into a high school or a high school football program? So I follow, I follow Turn right Orion onto real Road. close. So I'm from Orion, and uh, I, you know, I, I know a, a lot about the program. How would you and, feel about uh, letting everybody in, which came up yesterday during the MHSA's meeting? Uh, personally, I don't have a problem with that. I think that, you know, if this is really about the kids and giving them opportunities to play and so forth, miles. you know, the extra Arrive game work of, like, yes, that you should go to eight games, you know, that, you know, you're really not adding a game. But I think at the end of the day, it's high school football. There are very few upsets when you get right down to it, and the best teams typically rise to the top and are in the, are in the quarterfinals, semis, yeah, finals. I mean, if you're a four and four, five team that might have played a tough schedule and you get in maybe you can make some noise that wouldn't otherwise get in i'm not seeing i i do think that something needs to be done about scheduling which is i got or guess why going back to the point system works. i have i'm just working this through my head this just came workshop right i'm just workshopping and just spitballing it dog it just came to mind what if you were to say at the end, you have your eight game schedule and the ninth ninth game is really the first round of the playoffs, so to speak. But the playoffs, it really only accounts for the teams that are, you know, four and five and better, or say, or five and four, whatever you want, whatever you want to throw it at. Six wins get you right. So, but the rest of the team, the teams that aren't that good, they also get a ninth game, but against another one of your teams that's in that lower rung. So if I'm if you're got a team that's three and five, your week nine opponent isn't against a team that's seven and two, or, or I'm sorry, seven and one, but it's gonna be against another team that's two and seven. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a chance to win it. Yeah. You can funnel in that way. It's kinda like, hey, this is really our playoff game is we're mile. taking out a team Arrive that we can beat road. or that they can beat. I mean, you know, at least we're more evenly matched as opposed to be completely outmatched if you get into a playoff act. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. All right, Gator, we knew this was going to happen. Then it did happen. We predicted it on yesterday's show. It happened. And the play-by-play -play call of it, for purposes that maybe only are interesting to us, play-by-play -play call of it was fantastic. We'll get to that today at 1.32. It's Carson Anderson, 97.1 The Ticket. Sign up today at BetMGM and enjoy the thrill of victory on your very first bet. The King of Sportsbooks welcomes you to Showtime with the lock of the year. Simply place a $10 Moneyline wager in either Carolina or Houston, and if any team scores a touchdown, you're going to win $200 in free bets regardless of your bet's outcome. Just use bonus code GATOR200 when you make your first bet to take advantage of this offer. Enjoy football like never before with BetMGM's live betting options, boosted odd specials, and daily promotions at your fingertips all season long. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use bonus code GATOR200 to win $200 in free bets if either Carolina or Houston scores a touchdown. Nothing beats a W at BetMGM. New customer offer, paid in free bets. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 or older, Michigan only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. This excludes Michigan disassociated persons. give 
you a competitive edge in today's red hot housing market? Rocket can. That's because Rocket Mortgage can give you a verified approval. It could help your offer stand out. Rocket technology provides a rock solid verification of your income, assets, and credit, giving sellers greater confidence in you. Go to rocketmortgage.com or call us today at 8338 Rocket. Rocket. A verified approval is based on an underwriter's analysis of your individual financial information, appraisal, and title report. Call for cost information and conditions equal housing matter license in all 50 states and MLS Consumer Assets.org number 3030. Now that commission-free trading is the norm, it's time to rethink how we define value. Value is more than a price tag. It's the confidence of knowing you have a team of traders on standby to answer any question. It's Thinkorswim's charting and analysis tools, and it's a personalized education to fine-tune your skills. Value is becoming smarter with every commission-free online equity trade. Discover true value with TD Ameritrade, where smart investors get smarter. The model for world-class competition has always been faster, higher, stronger. It's the same for Navian, makers of condensing tankless water heaters. Faster to install and set up. Higher performance and efficiency to provide endless hot water. Stronger with the industry's strongest warranty. All because of the copper-free stainless steel heat exchanger built in every unit. Learn about Navian's condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at tanklessmadesimple.com. That's tanklessmadesimple.com. This hour of instant feedback brought to you by Mike Papara of National Benefit Plans. For affordable health insurance, log on to nbphealth.com. 97 won the ticket would like to remind you that when you text the ticket, standard text messaging rates apply. told you about Kevin Kiermeyer. That's right. Who slid into home play for the Tampa Bay Rays and the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays catcher had notes, like a note card, how they're going to pitch every batter. It was in his wristband or his pocket, play at the plate that kind of collided a little bit, not much. That every team has, every t every every catcher and pitcher is going to have this. So the notes fell out of his pocket or his wristband, right into basically onto Kiermeyer's lap. And he's laying at home plate. The Blue Jays are running off the field. It was the last out of the second inning. And Kiermaier looked down, saw this piece of paper. And he picked it up. And he went took it to his dugout. It was the notes of how the Blue Jays were going to pitch every, every Tampa player. The Blue Jays sent a bat boy over to retrieve it. Tampa said no. The Blue Jays were pissed. And then predictably, Gator, yesterday, Kiermaier was at the plate. In a 7-1 game, we pick up the play-by-play -play with the Toronto Blue Jays network, which includes Buck Martinez. And here's how it sounded. And now Barucki hits Kiermaier on the first pitch. And he said we have very above-average major, major leaguers. Um, so that's that, not Kiermaier it. said, is a dangerous thing. And now Barucki hits go. Kiermaier on the first pitch. And it's just natural to wonder... If this has anything to do with the yesterday and the, the card that he picked up at the plate, you knew nothing was going to happen in a meaningful moment. But with the Jays down six in the eighth inning, Kiermaier is sure wondering if that was intentional. Kevin Cash sure thinks that was intentional. Yeah, he wants him thrown out of the game, and that was obviously what was going on as Baruchy hit Kiermaier. And uh, nobody knows if he was ordered to or he did it on his own. But Kevin Cash understands what it was all about. The game is out of hand. It's seven to one, and Kiermaier takes one in the middle of the bat. That's not a good look on the Blue Jays for me. <laughs> I, I can't get enough of Buck Martinez. He took one right there in the middle of the back, and Kiermaier is uh, no doubt he's not happy about that, but he has to expect it. Uh, you know, I remember last time I took one in the middle of the back. Uh, I had to pay for extra. And I was uh, in some kind of massage parlor. I was out in Arizona. I don't know if that matters at this point, but needless to say, I can understand why the, the team was upset why Kevin Cash wanted to come out here and give his two cents worth. And uh, what's his name? Book, book, what? what? And, yeah, I don't want to get ourselves in trouble here, but it sounds like that guy's a mess and he's going to get in a lot of trouble and he deserves to be out of this ballgame. 
And who is the young Tiger rookie pitcher that everybody loves? Casey Mize is, uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't see him in a situation like this. Eighth inning of the baseball game, seven to one, and then they decide, we're gonna, now we're gonna throw a Kiermaier. I mean, it's the most predictable thing ever. Most predictable thing ever. And the fact that it took the umpires that long to discuss whether or not they were going to kick the pitcher out of the game. Look, it, it, it's the pitcher throwing a Kiermaier in that situation is every bit as dumb as Kiermaier taking the, the note card. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess tit for tat, whatever, right? It's, it's what happens yeah. in, in, in baseball. It's just dumb. It's, it's dumb all around. So I, I don't know if I can condemn it or condone it. I expect it. Well, there's two things about this. One is, if you're wondering, indeed that is a Redding, California accent because that's where Buck Martinez is from, Redding, California. I I would have guessed Texas or Texas. Well, I spent some time in Plainview in my youth. It, uh, it really was kind of influential. I uh, met a woman who was uh, actually uh, <laughs> she taught me the ways, if you know what I'm saying, uh, back in. 1968, just a year shy of a real interesting year in my life. Uh, I think it was Buster Aldi said, of course this is silly. And then he tweeted, how about like meeting behind the batting cages before the game to talk it out instead of just throwing baseballs at each other? I would tell you how Buster got his nickname. That's a story for another time. I don't know why you've turned Buck Martinez into like a dirty old lecher's <laughs> old man. <laughs> a creeper of some kind. 248-539-9797. Yeah, soon after that, that I started going by the name Buck. <laughs> uh, let's get back to your open line calls. Uh, we got a Brady import here on. Hi, Brady. Hey, uh, I don't know how I'm following up the year's impression, but anyway, uh, I'm just making a call about the high school football thing. Gator, you were right earlier. It affects maybe a dozen teams in the state. I mean, you go around, not a lot of Starting teams have to schedule the schedule problems, but one of the things that you have with the playoffs is you're seeing in some of the environment miles, start to get right broken up with the Avenue. system. Because one school is a little smaller than the other with the new system, they need to get to school at their same size, but as for the ones that are calling in, they're usually just the loudest because they're the biggest and they're the best. And those are the ones playing for state championships, and then they're complaining that no one wants to go and play them. So, are you in favor of them expanding the playoffs? I don't. It's not like my favorite idea, but I understand why they do it because if you let everyone in, now there's no more politicking to get to a certain number of wins or we have to play a certain number of bigger schools. Like, you can just fill out a schedule and you don't have to worry about the playoffs. If you have play, if you have a local team that's like a D1 school and they're historically a rival with it, like a D6, they can play because they don't have to worry about getting into the playoffs or any fans back about that stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean, it kind of eliminates all that for what that's worth. The problem is in football, unlike basketball, if you're really bad... I always think you can get hurt. That's the thing. That's one of the first points I brought up is why bother? I mean, you can't. The disparity between the haves and have nots, if you go to everybody makes the playoffs, it's it's ridiculous. There's no point in that. And it's not. It's it's just injuries in general. I, I brought the example. What if you got a really good team that plays a meaningless game against a, you know, a winless team and one of their star players gets hurt? Because that can happen in any football game. But what about the team that's completely outmatched? You know, they got a de the biggest defensive lineman weighs, you know, 190 pounds, and you're going against a, a team that's got a couple of 300 pounders. Good luck. You know, I said earlier, pack a lunch. But I, it's just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. It's not competitive. And if it's not going to be competitive, why do it? See, TJ Lang tweeted you guys, and I think he was addressing you, Gator, because with G, comma, so I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's Gator. I think the point is that if all teams make the playoffs, teams would be more likely to schedule some tougher opponents. That value can go a long way. I'm, look, I, we, we all agree. We'd like to see, well, at least when it comes to college football, we all agree we want to see games. better games and better schedules. And, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that, too, when it comes to, to high school. For the, for the better teams, be great. The better teams took out better teams. And I guess to his point is that I guess that 
if you have that, it can allow for a, a better team that takes a loss against a really good team. It, it, it doesn't affect them for playoffs, I guess. I don't know. I, it's just, it, it seems like it's catering to just a couple of teams. I always, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm not crazy about NIL is name, image, and likeness rules have been put in place to satisfy the 1%. It's, it's going to impact players a little bit across the board, but for the most part, and we're talking about all college athletes, it's put in place to satisfy the 1%. Mike is in Clinton Township, and he's next. Hi, Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going? We're good. Hey, I'm going to use lacrosse as an example for football. So last year, lacrosse, um, everybody got in, um, and so my kids go to Chippewa Valley. And so in our um, district, we had teams like uh, Brother Rice, uh, Sea Home, you know, Powerhouse, uh, cross teams, uh, Cats Tech, you know, you know, that's that's kind of a, a big area as far as uh, or a bigger area. And then like uh, Catholic Central was in uh, a district, you know, with like Dakota and um, like you know, like Lancaster's North, you know, teams that were like MAC teams. So it just kind of, I think, you know, like you guys said, you know, the the, the few are kind of ruling the many. And I just think it may be a different type of system because like. The Mac Red in football, you know, the last 15 years, they have like five state championships. So, so there are, so you have to beat another Mac team to get out of your district, which, you know, kind of. It's happened in basketball too forever. You, sometimes it's harder to get out of your district than it is to get out of your region because of who's in your district. So that in Flint all the time. Uh, all right, Gator. Moving on, I've got three Lions facts. About the Ravens game. Three facts. And Kang, this is for you too. Three facts, and you tell me how much those three facts will impact the outcome of the Lions Ravens game. Okay? Three facts. <laughs> we'll get to that next at 146. It's Carson Anderson, 97 1. Whether it's after a hard day at work or relaxing on the weekend, we all love kicking back and watching live sports. Tonight, there's a live game going on NFL action. It's uh, the Panthers with the Texans. Now, normally you might not care, but if you have a little action on the game, you're going to care, and that's what makes it fun. I don't care if it's baseball, football, basketball, or a maybe irrelevant Thursday night game you thought. You, uh, you all of a sudden care. That's why I downloaded the WinBet app to get involved. W-Y-N-N Bet. This way, if you're a recreational player like myself or a serious handicapper, WinBet is your ticket for every exciting wager. From straight bets, parlays, teasers, whatever you can dream up of, the app is easy to use, and you can find it on the app. Everyone knows Win is one of the biggest and best brands in the gaming industry. A lot of apps out there, but you got to go with one that you know. At least that's what I'm going to do, and that's Win. Get off the sidelines. Get the app on Google Play or Apple Store today. And put yourself in the game with Win Bet. Must be 21 or older and present in a state where playthrough Win Bet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Peloton bike offers more motivation. Great job, team! 70% of members say they work out more now with Peloton than before. Get game-changing cardio at a new game-changing price. The original Peloton bike, now $400 less. Learn more at OnePeloton.com. This is Andrew Bogish with an Odyssey Sports Minute, sponsored by Lexicon, your holistic provider of practice management software and legal support services. It is not easy for me to be nice to the St. Louis Cardinals. They were my Mets enemy in the 80s when I was learning to love baseball, and the current teams have been annoyingly good for too long. But... They deserve a tiny bit of respect right now. Today in Milwaukee, the Redbirds go for a four-game sweep at the first-place Brewers and a 12-game win streak overall. It's their longest run in two decades, and it has them running away with the second NL wild card. Back on August 10th, the Cards were eight and a half games away from the playoffs. Now they are four and a half games clear of the Phillies and Padres. It's because of Arenado and Goldschmidt and O'Neill and Wainwright and manager Mike Schilt, and there's no signs of them letting up anytime soon. I'm Andrew Bush. Attorney.
Morning, Joe Cordell. New school, new job, new home. Change is hard and can leave you feeling isolated. And divorce delivers one of life's hardest blows. The relationships you counted on are suddenly gone. But you don't have to walk through this alone. For more than 30 years, Cordell & Cordell has guided men through the challenges of divorce. You're not alone. Call Cordell & Cordell. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell & Cordell's Detroit area attorneys. Offices in Troy and Ann Arbor. CordellCordell.com for the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Sounds of a game. Quinn Tez Cephas touchdown. Rodgers get sacked back inside the 15 yard line. Beautiful throw by 16 and 88 hauls it in. Sounds of a game brought to you by Bill Brown Ford. Hi, it's Matt Garko here from Bill Brown Ford in Livonia. Our dealership is the fastest way to get your new Ford in 2021. With inventory arriving daily, you can drive away today in your new vehicle at Bill Brown Ford. Visit us online at BillBrownFord.com. Bill Brown Ford, new adventures beginning daily. Rutgers plays Michigan this Saturday, and you control the point spread on FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel is moving the line one point in Michigan's favor for every 500 fans who bet them to cover. It's all part of FanDuel's spread the love promotion. The more bet the better the spread. No telling how high this can go. Best of all, your odds are whatever the point spread is at kickoff. So you don't have to wait to get in on the action. FanDuel is always lead. hooking you up with great odds, great promotions all season long. If you're new to FanDuel Sportsbook, sign up today with promo code TICKET to also receive a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Just look for the Spread the Love Market to place your bet today. Must be 21 or older and present Michigan First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Must wager in designated crowdfunding market. Maximum wager $25. Payment at minus 110. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 270 7117. Make better, best, Stay best, smarter, right and beat the books today. Download the BetQL app today to better your chances. Every Thursday, prior to the Thursday Night NFL game, we pick who's going to lose the Thursday Night game. You know, this is a vintage Thursday Night affair between Carolina and the Houston Texans. You are one pathetic loser. Who loses tonight's game? Well, Doug, you look at this, and Carolina is uh, starting off the season on a high note there, 2-0, but given the, the wins are against a, a bad Jets team, and uh, uh, I think last week we can say a dilapidated New Orleans Saints team that may have been overly inflated because they beat up on, on uh, Green Bay to start the season. But they played without much of their coaching staff, and they had a couple players out with COVID issues. Nonetheless, they won the games. Win what's in front of you. Houston has an issue at quarterback. Houston, we have a problem because I don't know if Davis T-Bone uh, Mills is going to be the, uh, the right guy to have at, at quarterback to take care of the Carolina Panthers. I, I, I think the Texans are are bad enough with a starting quarterback, let alone to go at it with with T-Bone at the helm. So I'm going to say that the, the Texans will lose this game. I think the Texans have the perfect formula to lose it. They don't stop the run. They're going against Christian McCaffrey. They're starting a guy who threw four interceptions in the preseason, and his QBR last week was 10.1. Houston's got the formula, and they lose this game tonight. You know, it says minus eight. It was minus seven. Get on the quick. <laughs> or it's minus, like, 12. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, Wait, does Kenny like that? Kenny, you like the, uh, you like Houston plus the eight points tonight? Oof. It seems like that's the NFL, man. Carolina seems like the obvious pick. So if I had to pick someone, if I had to, Take Carolina to lose. Oh, so you take we're Houston. Losers, aren't we? Well, I guess it's just don't lose the game outright. Is what we're doing. I'm just, I, I, I can't. You, you take, you take. You, if you were betting it, you take Houston plus the. Yes, yes. Wow. Hey man, Vegas. 
I know. Vegas, I know. You guys do it five better. You know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. <laughs> oh my no. gosh. It's not easy. Do we ever? This has been a rough year. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's rough every year, weeks. Gator. Honestly, it's well, not, this, not you guys. Everyone. No, this one seems a little bit more difficult uh, to start off with. I concur with my man here. Uh, this one. I feel like I say that every year because it's true. It's hard. We've had some pretty good years. Yeah, this one uh, is. Uh, uh, there, there's so many upsets that have happened the first few weeks. I've been above that 60% mark before. <laughs> I'm going to have to really rally. <laughs> you really need a strong week. Okay, I got three facts. You tell me, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much this fact impacts the Lions game with Baltimore and who's going to win it, all right? You okay. Ready? The Ravens have allowed 34 points per game. The Lions have allowed 38. But 34 points per game is a huge total of points allowed. Do you think 34 points a game, a defense that has given up that, impacts this, impacts the outcome of this game? Uh, not, not much because they, they've gone against Oakland, who has put up some points, and they've gone against Kansas City, who expect to put up points. Okay, There's so only two teams worse than them, Detroit and Atlanta. Yeah, but I do. Th I, well, when you said, does it mean anything? I, I think it gives some hope that the Lions can score some points. I don't know if the Lions are going to get in the 30s. But I would expect the Lions to be able to score some. Dang, does this mean anything? Well, yeah, you saw what the Lions could do against the Packers, who have a pretty, you know, porous defense. And given the opportunity, they can score. Now, can they sustain that scoring? And you know, if the Ravens make adjustments, then it might be done. It might be done at halftime. But who knows? I mean, yes, I does think it, I do think it means something for the over. <laughs> <laughs> for the, I would agree with that. It means something for the over. Which at this point is uh, is set at 50. It's a big number. Stay in the so on a scale of 1 to 10. Matters for the over. <laughs> That's it. Got it. All right. Uh, this fact, I'm going to throw out fact number two. All right. A fact. Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson was not at practice. He said yesterday his hip was sore after his flip into the end zone. That is a fact. He was out of practice today. <laughs> How much does that matter to you in the outcome of this game Sunday? Uh, very little. Very little. Lamar Jackson is, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is just scheduled maintenance at this point. You know, no need to, to go overboard and practice tomorrow, we'll walk through day or whatever. I think he'll be fine. He, he, and it's not just Lamar Jackson that makes that team go. I've been saying for a few days now, they run the ball extremely well with no name running backs right now. They've lost name running backs and they still run the ball just fine. Matter to you, King? I think it just matters is he's just going to burn him with their arm, his arm. I think he's just not going to run as much. Uh, but look at the Lions secondary. So this is a chance to show off the uh, the arm that Lamar has. And Hollywood Brown, whoever, you know, um, Mark Andrews, those guys are going to have a, a decent day. Yeah, if, if he can't run, it doesn't mean he can't be effective. I think it impacts the game and makes it closer. But I don't think that it's... The only way it's really impactful is if he doesn't play. I will say this. If this keeps him out for any extended period of time for flipping into the end zone when he didn't need to, this would be ridiculous. Yeah, I don't personally like it when that happens just because of the possible injury factor. I think Golden Tate used to do it every now and then. And I remember when Lamar did it on su that Sunday night game, but Collinsworth came out and said right away, you know, great run by Lamar. Da -da. Don't really like to flip that much, but... And, Kind of just left it at that. But this is one of the reasons why you don't want it, an mile, accident to happen. Turn right to Jamie Brown. Here's a third fact, as I promised. I changed the fact, but it's uh, Ravens have an NFL worst 376 yards per game allowed through the air. Does that matter much? <sighs> I, I think it's, it's like the first stat with how many points per game they give up in, in the early going. I think it just means the Lions can score some points, but I don't. In the grand scheme of things, I would still expect the Lions to, to lose this game. But it's nice to know that, it, that they'll at least get in the end zone. Part of me is, that, like, if you can't throw the ball against this team. That's what I was just going to say. If they can't score and throw the ball against the Ravens, yeah. there's, there's some big problems with the Lions. I mean, the Ravens, Bigger than we even think. The stats aren't as bad as they appear given who they've played. But at the end of the day, it's... The, the opportunity could be well, there for them to move the ball. I mean, it, here's the the number is that they they give up what 450 yards per game. The yeah. Ravens do. Yeah, it's 379, but then a decent run. Their, their defense isn't what it used to be, but like you said, two weeks in the season they played the Chiefs and the Raiders. Man, two so good offensive teams. Yeah, let's yep. slow the roll down. They get this might be their get right game for the defense. You know what this is? Up. This is an early season statistical 
An emulation. <laughs> yeah. <Nice job. laughs> the emulation. Uh, we welcome Enrico Beard. What's up, Rico? You, you guys are amazing. I wanted to let you know. Thank you for. Thanks, Rico. You guys are bringing interest to this game on Sunday. Yeah. You are. You honestly listening to you guys talk. I'm like, maybe, maybe I should watch this game. Well, I think you should probably well, watch I, it. I think you should. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have to watch it for my job. Yep. But well, I'm saying, someone who has no vested interest, you make it sound like they got a puncher's chance. Well, we didn't, we say, didn't that. say that. No, no, you make it sound. That's why I said the guys we, have done a great job. The only thing I said would make a difference is Lamar Jackson doesn't play. Or the plane just doesn't arrive. Well, I mean, right it, right well, Lamar Jackson, Jackson right did sit out practice today. They fired 53 people in the stands. And, that, and that's something that <laughs> could impact the game. If he doesn't play, then they have a puncher's chance. But, I'm, you know, sitting out on Thursday doesn't mean he's not playing. Right. What are you guys going to play coming up next? Uh, a couple of things. One, we, we do have a Lions topic of, I know they're going through the rebuild. Mm -hmm. Is there another layer to this rebuild that we want to explore? Okay. We'll do that at three. Mike's angle. Turn right onto Cherry Lane Avenue. Avenue. Breaking then news. Then turn left onto Saju T. Gray. Is there something specific this time or just a general state of demeanor? It's uh, tailgating. He's got a problem with MSU tailgating, even though he hasn't been there sign, forever. Turn okay. left and onto T. Gray. Then we have to talk. Haven. He has worked up that he is just like, we are going to lose this game, and Nebraska State has no shot. They're wearing the block has helmets, and that's it's at night. Turn and, left uh, onto Haven's Lane. Then like, I, I, is on your you're right. not really giving me real reasons. Like, Mike's been hurt at night games. You understand, right? No. I mean, so that, I mean, it, it's. I think it all stems from, from that Saturday night, years Man. ago. Just make plays. We, we got it. What do you? What, what do you do? Terrified. What do you do tailgating wise? I mean, or how really? I mean, I know you're working games. You're not necessarily. Right. I, you know what? I don't. I mean, that's what, he's really. I, I, you know, I love Mike, but tailgating is like his mountain to die on, and I'm just like, do you get? But I'm asking you personally, do you get there like three hours?